So this is not waste time. Since the tenth is look, we am a bare, am a bare class in your body. And everybody ma pa camera on. So if you want to move, camera team you can look more available. So this is everybody mute my record of camera. Up now. So, this is everybody who camera at the mic. I got a firm leg. Open your power. Ah, not a row. So <laughs> The class we are going to do today is about um, motherboard component. <clears throat> I mean the component you have on the motherboard. So today's class is all about motherboard component. Firstly, I want us to know. Um, let me pass this one first. I want every one of us to meet our mic at the time we don't need them because mostly when this mic or someone's camera pops up, mostly it always distracts me and it makes me forget um, what I need to explain at that particular point. So let us take control on that. So based on this night class, now we are talking about motherboard components here. We have different type of motherboard components and they are all having their specific Tax. For instance, if I should open a board here, this is a board here. We have different components on it, and they have their specific way of working that are not the same. So, if we should um, use them wrongly or misplace them, they will. They will, they will work wrongly. It's more or less like if I want to cook stew and I need Maggi, so where that part I need Maggi, I use salt. Automatically, I will never get the output I'm expecting if I'm to use um, Maggi. Or situation whereby I need oil, probably granite oil. So, and I use ordinary water, 100% I will not get my expectation. Just like when we are cooking, that we have all these ingredients that are having their specific um, tags and some are substitutes. That is exactly how motherboard component look like. So at time when you are cooking and you need um, palm oil, you can still use granite oil. It might not be exactly what you want to, but at least it can. It, it will still um, you will still get something positive. So that is the component that are that are substitutes to some um, level. So the thing, the same thing goes for every other ingredient. So the point here, let me say the nutshell here is all these motherboard components, they have their specific tax that um, the manufacturer has designed for them. So if it happens that we are not mixing them up, there will definitely be issue. So firstly, if I should hold a motherboard, 
it used to have front side and back side basically where the part where we have the processor is always refers to as the as the back side because mostly we should dismantle board if you want to remove the heat zinc you will notice you have the you have to remove the board and you have to leave the board up and remove the heat zinc and sometimes we used to refer to this back and front side as component side and soldering side the main easy one here is the front side and the back side here that is the the part that has the heat zinc is refers to as the back side of the motherboard firstly if i should check these components like i've been showing this picture here we have different kind of components we have capacitor we have resistor we have diode we have transistor we have jfet mosfet ic inductor fuse connector connector is not really a component but let's just refer to it as component as well it's not a component we have pad even pad we have switch pad is not also a component we have crystal as well but we'll explain every one of them one after the other First, if you check carefully here, this is capacitor, and you can see on the motherboard here, they are always represented with C or PC, and that is what led to what you are seeing here. Let me show you. Capacitors are represented in C or PC on the motherboard, so. Let me open another motherboard. Okay, today we do power bike. Oh, serious? Oh, serious? Hmm. Okay, the design of this side that he joined me physically from class. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying earlier on, you should check these components here. We have different, if you check this motherboard, you have different components there. And I said capacitors are represented with C or PC. I want to show you capacitor example. If you check all of these things, we have um, capacitor all over this place. This is one capacitor here. This is C for representing capacitor this is one and this is another one here this one is small but it's also a capacitor what is the location here so it is represented with c and this is another c here so if you can see it you can magnet you can zoom up your you can zoom your phone like you are zooming an image this is another one here that is represented with c trying to tell me this is capacitor so anything capacitor are represented with c and if you should get to schematic they are always represented with C and PC too. Sometimes they also use EC, but it's not always common at all. But mostly, what you are, what, whenever you have capacitor, you have C or PC. We have different type of capacitors. We have capa um, polarized capacitor and we have the non-polarized capacitors. Whenever we are saying polarized capacitor, that is capacitors that have positive and negative side. And if it is um, non-polarized, that is it has no positive and negative size. For instance, this is mistake, but I'll correct it here in the video. this one is non-polarized 
and this one is the polarized one if it is polarized capacitor as the other part of the capacitor is going to be the negative and this first part here will be positive that is why we refer this particular one as polarized capacitor if we are to place this capacitor on the motherboard all these ones here are non-polarized capacitor they have no positive and negative side if we are to place this polarized capacitor on the motherboard if it is placed wrongly on the board it will bridge our board and it will cause the board to short so this has positive and negative side so the one that has no positive and negative are the to the non-polarized so this is the symbol for capacitor if you should enter if you should enter schematic it should be drilled like this and in, sometimes it can be rotated like this it doesn't matter the main point is you have the drawing in this form and if it is going to be um, polarized one you have it like this as well this part will be negative and the other part here will be positive they can also rotate this one as well when you get to schematic so the rotation means nothing just get used to the symbol if this part will be negative and here will be positive so that is it for that so let me show you guys the polarized capacitor on the board basically polarized cap we always ask we always have polarized capacitor at the output of um, PWM section. If you should notice, or if you should notice all the PWM section, you see you have um, a capacitor there. If you look at this place now. We have like this component now is a capacitor. I'll zoom it later. Let me screenshot this and play. So let me look for another set of capacitor for better understanding. But this time around. I'm looking for a polarized capacitor. Here, yeah. if we should look at these capacitors, they are all, they are also represented with C. Here, yeah. they are just trying to twist it by using PT. Professionally, or let me say schematically, this is not right. This T is is not a capacitor symbol but if you are familiar with capacitor you know this is c by the time you begin to shake if you have anybody that has motherboard here the person should specify can you not confirm so let the person confirm what is the location of this capacitor what is the um, printing on these capacitors yeah, oh, the person said that nothing is written on the capacitors so for those board that has no printing that is no labeling of components these are the board we refer to as board that has no board prints look at all these written all these uh, writings here are uh, what we refer to as our um, board print any board that has no board print these clues will not be given like this one we have lcd1 we wouldn't have anything like lcd1 so those board that have no printing are refers to board that have no board prints. So this printing are basically for motherboard location and schematic location. So whenever we are troubleshooting and we say, okay, because this board has no board print, it's giving us issue to, to fix it. This is only because it is easy to locate this component. But we'll come back there later. What we are trying to say here is that Whenever capacitor are being represented on the board, they use C and PC. Capacitors are represented with C and PC. So that is it for this part of capacitor. So quickly, for picture purpose, if you need the reference, let me quickly merge this. So whenever I'm talking about polarized capacitor, these are the capacitors I'm talking about. If I should open another board, I will show you there. Instead of, instead instead of opening another board, I will go to another topic. So when I open another board, I will show you guys there. These are polarized capacitors. This 
one here, all we are trying to do here is just introduction to this component so that we'll be able to differentiate them. So by the time we enter this class fully, so we are going to talk about each and every one of these components fully in detail, their, their tags, why they are connected in the way they are connected. So we'll talk about them. So let me screenshot this and I go for the next component after that. Now, if you should check on this board now, I believe you guys are now familiar with capacitor. There are some capacitor that look like it as well. This is this is also a capacitor. This this type, like this previous capacitor is always the same type of it's always the same thing with this. So when you are changing this, you just have to be careful of the value. But the main point here is these are all capacitors. So I'll make this particular one as well. So conclusively, any PWM at the output at, at the output part, you are going to have a filter capacitor. Only well, let me say filter capacitor for simplicity. Let me just say capacitor. So any PWM, we have output capacitor. What do I mean by PWM? This section of the board I have one IC, two switches, one coil and one capacitor. So these are capacitors. So for next component, let's go for resistor. So resistor 2 is a very, very important component on motherboard whenever we are talking of repair. There are different faults that can come up on system that, are, that they are traced back to resistor. So what is resistor? Resistor is, the, is an electronic component that is used to restrict the flow of electron. So by the time we are going, uh, by the time we are treating resistor in the motherboard, you understand it fully. This is just introduction. How do you recognize resistor on the motherboard? Generally, I told you guys by the labeling alone, you will know which component you are dealing with. So anything resistor, you have P or PR. So if I should check this one here now, this is R or PR for resistor. So anything P means power and the R there means resistor. After this alphabet, a number will be written there. Like when they say um, like when they say block A number 100 and coin in a shop, like number one and blah 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 in a shop. So it's going to be alphanumeric by having alphabet to be the component and numeric to be the location. We should check here, we have um, resistors, a lot of resistors here. Resistors has a lot of functions they do. At times they use them for board protection, at times they use them for a particular IC protection, and at times they use resistor to pass voltage, and at times they use resistor to drop voltage. So the kind of connection of a resistor and the value determines what function is doing there. And if you should look at the label here, it is represented with PR. And for this particular one, this is the resistor here, PR. That is the representation of the component. So if you look at this place now, we have PC, which means this one is capacitor. This one, we have P, one PR here, so there is a resistor around here. So I can't really identify the resistor here, but there is a resistor there. Here as well, PR means resistor, PC means capacitor, another PR means resistor again. Even here, I'll have to choose this, but if I want to understand this printing. But for the sake of this particular card, this small, small component, this small, small black tiny component, they are the resistors on motherboard. With its check schematic, you can get it clearly. These are resistors. Which other one here? This is another resistor, bootstrap resistor. So, all these components here, they are resistors and they are represented with this zigzag line. This is resistor symbol. 
by the time we are getting on the schematic this is how um we get the symbol for resistor now that we are now familiar with resistor the two components that i've shown you guys here i'll go and show you the two components on schematic let me take this screenshot okay so this particular i'll use the schematic of this particular board for better understanding and i can change the board if i want to spice it up this particular board here this is the schematic i'm opening here Resistor used to have different value, so they can look alike, but that doesn't mean they are the same thing. In terms of value, they are always different. For instance, if you check these resistors here, or let me go for another one that we can locate the number easily. This paper here wouldn't let us see this part clearly, so I'll go for another one. There is always a no resistor on motherboard, so let me use this part here. Look at this part here. You should look at this part. This is a resistor and it is represented with R3717. This is another resistor here again. And this is labeled with R. This is R4202. R4202. This is it here. You can see this resistor, they look alike. Now we'll type these two resistors on our schematic and check if their value are the same thing. This is R4202. Let's check what value we have. The value of this particular resistor is 1K. 1K resistor. Let me see if I can show you better. This is the location and this is the value here. 1K resistor. 1k resistor that is for the one we are checking here r4202 okay so for the next component here let's check the value of the component let's check through the location the location is r3717 so don't forget the first one is 1k let me write it there this one is 1k so the next one we are checking now is R3717. R3717. Yeah. This is it here. Yeah. If you should check the value of this one, this this particular resistor value is higher than the other resistor. This one is 10k. As you can see, 10k resistor, that is the k. This is the symbol, this is the value, and this one is 10k. So therefore, despite the fact that they look alike, that doesn't mean they are of the same value or the same thing. They won't do the same tax because their value is different. So they are not replaceable with each other. So that is why we need to understand schematic. Because you can't just go on motherboard and pick resistor randomly. So each resistor have their own value. You need to be sure of the value you are using. So if you are to confirm the value of this resistor, just place the meter across the resistor. It has no polarity. So you can place your probe at any point of the resistor. Just one leg at one point and one leg at the other point. That's it. So let's assume this is my multimeter. Is going to have the positive part and negative part, so you can you can reverse the probe. It's still the same thing. So you have one at one part of the resistor, and this, let me say this is my positive probe. You can place it and place it on the other part. Even though if you should reverse it, you get the same thing. So for this resistor, you get 10k. This particular one because this is 10k. So the value you are going to get at each resistor is determined by the um, um, schematic. So that is that for resist. That is that about resistor. So resistor doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be small like this. There are some resistors that are bigger. Like now when we are talking about CLR, the CLR resistor is always bigger. 
for instance let me check let me check um, the CLR of this board let me go to the other side okay then close the again shimmer let me open another one here look at yeah this is another resistor here yeah, big one and if you should notice the location is PR4502 so let me sketch it out so that is that about resistor so this is resistor here if you should check it on schematic this is how it will be represented so resistor doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be small so based on resistor i want to believe we are clear with that part so i can open another board if i like is this resistor part clear Okay. Okay. So, so now can you can can you now differentiate component that are resistor and those that are capacitors? Ben sir, I help again. Okay, okay. I want to open another motherboard. I have one motherboard here that is very very clear. The picture is image, so the, the picture is HD image. I should open anything, it's always clearer. Let me go for another resistor and another, but uh, another mother. But this is another resistor here. You can see all these black ones here, they are resistor. If you should notice here, not all the components that has board print, except the major one, or let me say the big, big component there. Look at this one now, this is C82. If I should point this on the schematic, this is where it is going to drive me to. And look at these small small ones no location is, give, is given to them but there is a way we can detect which one we are dealing with but it's always just complex but that is that about that going for the next component so what's the next component we have on the list the next component we have here is the diode so let me zoom out The next component we have here is the diode. Like I've explained about diode, this class is just an introduction class, just introduction to all these components. We have different type of diode, just two of them. We have the Zener diode and the normal diode. So when we are talking about diode generally, it allows voltage through a particular part and block voltage from the other part if it is zener diode it allows voltage to pass through both sides but at the cathode side it has condition this is zener diode here the only difference between zener diode and normal diode if this is my normal diode here the zener diode is going to be like this On schematic, zener diode and normal diode, they are always different in terms of the symbol. But on motherboard, they can look alike. This is the positive of this part, and this is negative of this part. So if you should say this one cannot allow voltage through this part, this will allow voltage, but it's going to be on some condition by reducing some amount of voltage. Now, if for instance, if 19 is coming through here and the voltage you want to pass through this side um, by getting to this other part which is the positive part you will be getting around 14 volt depending on the value of the resistor so zener diode is also used to drop voltage as well on the motherboard these are the these are one of the function of zener diode too even diode so that is that about diode so whenever we are talking about diode how does it look like basically a diode will have two legs but by the time we are having component represented with D and you are seeing tail leg, 
all they are trying to let you know is that we have two diodes in it and it is going to be additional pin that we don't have just one no. it can be two it can be three so based on the number of the components so if we to check on motherboard let me open another motherboard what is the representation of diode diodes are represented in d or pd d or pd so we'll log out now or oh, let me log out myself and i'll continue We start building. Continue waiting for the rest to come online. So after like a minute or two, so I'll continue. No. I think we can continue from here. So, I was talking about diode before. I'm trying to find those diode before. If you check diode, this is how a diode look at. Let me go for this two. Okay. So this is a diode here, and what is the location number for this? D31. D, like I've said, D and PD are used for diode. And this is another diode here, and this is D30 here. We should notice it has a line here. That is, this line here is the positive side. No, that should be the negative side of the diode. If I should if I should go to schematic, these drawing here physically they look alike, but if I should check them on schematic, one can be zina and the other one should be normal. So here, let me make this. This is diode. is another diode so I can still try and show you guys in the schematic whether these two there is inner diode or and what do I like I've said earlier on Zina diode will have this small curve on it so let's try and open the schematic and see what we have there but let me go for this screenshot before opening the schematic So the next thing now is um, I want to show you um, in the schematic. So
So let me open something. Compact motherboard. This is compact motherboard. Okay. This is the schematic and this is the image here. So what is the location of this um, diodes? We said one is D30. Okay. I need to zoom out here. So let me zoom out so that you guys see it clearly. D30. Enter. Not here. Not here. You have enough D30 here. This is just P and T part 30, not D30. T part 30. So as you can see, this one is A D uh, T part 30. So we need the one that is D30 alone. Later, when we are getting to schematic, I will, I will teach you guys how to locate components. So we are looking for D30. This is D30. As you can see now, this particular D30 is Zina diode. No, this one is Zina diode, and this is it here. So let me let me use another color because there is more red in this diagram. So sorry, what do I call this line initially? Do I say positive or negative? Whatever I call this line, this is the cathode side which is the negative side of the motherboard the part that has line so if you should check if you should zoom out you see it clearly cathode side is cathode side is always the part that has the line so let me make this true this is for zina diode so now if i'm working on schematic here at this and at the end of this part i should get three volts here if i'm working on this motherboard it be by e, the work is expected from this component here. Why do they con why do they connect it like this? By the time we get to um, this component individually, I will take it carefully. So that is it for this part of the um, for this diode part. So let me take screenshot of this part. So we'll confirm the second one too. Is it whether it is normal diode or zener diode? So we are going to confirm this together. So what is the second one? The second one is D31. This is it here. D31. I'll type it here. D31. So here we have normal diode. So the second diode here is the normal diode. So as you can see here, this is the um, K side. That happens to be the cathode side, the line part of the diode. The cathode side and the other part is the anode. So you can see now, they look alike but they are different type of diode. That is one of the main usefulness of schematic diagram. This is it here. So concerning diode, I want to believe we are done with the introduction. So at times you see them identifying diode with component that has um, probably three leg. Main reason why we have it like that is because they've combined probably two to three diodes together in just one component. Let me see if I can find any for you guys. If you should notice this one, it is using Q7. Because this is Q7, not D, so this is not diode. Because by the time we find it, this is exactly how it will look like. But the only difference is the alphabet will be different from each other. So because it's not D, that's not what I'm looking for. Even this one is Q, Q24. Not this one. This is another diode D type five, but this is just two leg. I want the three leg or four leg. And go to another mother, but if I couldn't if I couldn't find it here. Nothing for this one. Let me go to the other side of this board. Look at this diode here. This is this is this is so I like this one. This one have um six legs, so I believe you guys will understand now. This is more this is six leg, and we said that it has just two legs. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if I should come here, 
in the schematic and type D sys. This, this is going to take long because it is just two alphabets. Just keep typing enter. This is this is maybe this is one one. So I want only D sys and this is my D sys. So in this component, how many that do we have? One, two, three, four. So what we have here is just is nothing but um let me clear this. If you should check this location number here, this is this is and this is this here, this is pin number one, this is it. Pin number one and six are one diode, as you can see. Pin number one and six are one diode. Pin number two and six again are one diode again. Pin number three and five are one diode. Pin number four and three as well are one diode. So therefore, this component here, this is diode, but we have four diode in just single component here. So if I want to make your leg, let me show you here. Pin number one. This is my pin number one here, and here. Whenever we have our dots, is the first pin of component, and it is counted anti-clockwisely. Here, this is pin number one here. So if I want to make them from here, so this is my pin number one here. So my pin number two. This is my pin number two here. And pin number three. This is it here. So it's going to continue like that on and on and on anti clockwisely. Pin number four. This is it here. Pin number five. This is it here. And finally, pin number six is the last pin here. So that is it for this part. So I will now clear about introduction to diode here. Ben, sir. Okay. So wide, very wide topic. So this is a very wide and very, very interesting topic. So, so this we so from here we are going to move to the next component here. Here we have transistor. Transistor as for transistor, they are represented with Q or PQ. Q or PQ. Let me change the color of the pen here. Resistors are represented with Q or PQ, and they are always with three pins. At times, it used to have um, six pins too, but basically, they are three pins in nature. So, in these three pins, we have one particular pin for base, another one for emitter, and one for connector. This is the symbol for transistor, and if it should come on the motherboard, basically. It is, all, it is also represented with Q. Oh, let me use another picture here. They are always represented with Q. It's a diode, a three leg diode. So, therefore, this is going to be two diode. So, this is going to be one leg of the diode and the other leg of the diode. So, this is two leg diode. So, for transistor, they are represented with Q. Or PQ. The main point here is let me treat these two together because these two they are they are using the same um, abbreviation to represent them. Q or PQ. They are represented with Q or PQ, but they have different tags. This one is working for game of current, and for JFET, this is the game of voltage. So, for this JFET, we used to have a pin for, um, we used to have two types, we have um, PMP and MPN. So, they have the principle of working, which is principle of high logic and low logic. 
even JFS, they are working on the principle of high logic and low logic. But the, difference, but the difference between them is the symbol. As transistor is having um, a meter base and collector, if it is going to be JFET, you are going to have source, gate, and then you are going to treat them carefully. So these two components now, I'll show you on motherboard for on, uh, on schematic. So for motherboard, this is the representation for these two components. So even MOSFET, is, it is also represented with Q or PQ, but I'll show you the difference later. So let me open the same schematic again. Okay. So this is another motherboard here. I will locate the um, give it an what's it called transistor. So yeah, let's just check generally whether I'll find any um transistor or give it. I told you it's going to have three leg. We used to have more of them on board. Let me go to the Voltage part of the motherboard. I told you guys it used to have six legs as well. Look at this part, this Q theory on this schematic here. This is it here. This is JFET. How do I know? Because of the symbol. This is symbol of JFET. This is the diode, the internal diode. And this is the arrow here. JFET too, we have two types of JFET, just like transistor has PAP and MPN. In the case of JFET, you are going to have P channel and N channel, just like positive and negative. N channel is working with high voltage and P channel is working with low voltage. The main point is Q, they are represented with Q or PQ. And if you should check again, it used to have gate, gain, and source. So if it is the other one, which is transistor, you're going to have emitter, base, and collector. Let me check if I'm going to see transistor quickly. Until you come by. Uh -huh. This is another one here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to have emitter, base, and collector. Just like you have this here. Is written here. This is base, and if you should check here, they are they are the same drawing. This is going to have base, collector, and the emitter. This is the emitter here under this base, emitter, and collector. So the so how this is going to work is determined by the base. So they are working like switch. And if it is JFET as well, the working condition of the JFET is determined by the gate voltage. The type of the amount of voltage at the gate will determine how the JFET or transistor will work. So if we are checking them, if we are, if we are troubleshooting, we always have our expectation at this gate. So if you are getting wrong, a wrong amount or something that is contradicting our expectation, automatically the component will work in contrary to the um, expected tax. So JFET, all these JFET, transistor MOSFET, they are used to communicate as per um, different, they are used to communicate different signals in motherboard, whether battery is present, um, they press power button or blah 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 or how does the motherboard um, turn on and off some signals with the same line so it is controlled by the turning on and off of these JFET and transistors so that is it for this part do we all understand can you also show you so the next component here is the MOSFET. We should 
Um, normally, this most right, this most right is always obvious in the motherboard, and it is always represented with Q or PQ2. Mostly, most right will have eight leg, just like when we were talking about switch in the other topic. Let me see. When we are talking about um switch. We are talking about um, there's going to, um, the 19 volt tree. We need two switch. And when we're, okay, when we are talking about this PWM section, when we said they are going to need um two switches, these switches here are MOSFETs, and this is MOSFET as well here at the VIN. These two switch for the VIN line. Mostly it used to have eight pins. Look at here too. We have eight pin. Here too. Pin all these ones. They are MOSFETs. So they are working principle in different way. Actually, they are they are abbreviated, and the full meaning is Mecta Oxide Semiconductor Feed Effect Transistor. The other one is FET Feed Effect Transistor, the JFET. That is just the abbreviation FET. The difference between JFET and MOSFET is just that um, MOSFET is working on more higher voltage, and JFET is working on low voltage. So we should notice here, three pins are together, as you can see, three pins are together, let me use pen. We should check here, here we have three pins here, and here we have four pins here, and this particular pin is standing alone. So this part of the component is source, and this part is the drain part of the component. And this part is the gate part of the component. So, however, this component is going to work is determined by the value at the gate. For instance, whenever we are talking about those two volt, those two MOSFETs um, that control 19 volts, if no matter what they will use two MOSFETs, if they don't use two MOSFETs, they will use a single diode and a MOSFET. No matter how, no matter how, there's going to be a, there's going to be two switches there. And let me open a board here. If you should look at these MOSFETs here, these two MOSFETs here, let me show you clearly. So they also have four pins that are together. And let, okay, let me zoom it out and I'll sketch it for better understanding. go for black look at these four legs they are together and this is the drain part of the component look at these three legs here the, these are the source this particular one is the gate look at this one as well these three pins are together so this is the source for this part and here we have four legs together this is the drain for this part and here this is the gate for this part. So, in most cases, um, this battery and charger communication here, when we say bat um, battery and adapter are communicating with the help of this switch, the gate signals are the signals we are controlling to control the communication of battery and adapter. For instance, if we don't have charger in the laptop and we are running on battery so the battery voltage should not get to the um, charging port because we don't want it to get there so it is determined by these switches by controlling this gate so if this voltage is getting there the board will be malfunctioning so mother, all these controls are, are done by the control on the gate even these gates are used to um, insulate the board if there is problem on the board. So they can control the gates to insulate the board. So if laptop is going to charge, this gate value must be 100% correct. If this gate value is not, is not functioning properly, 100% the board will not charge. So if we are to bypass this place, we can just jump wire to bypass this place. So the board will power on, but the only problem is the laptop will not charge because there is no more communication of when to stop 
and went to power. So everything here is determined by the gate. So the difference between the MOSFET and JFET is just that MOSFETs are used for handling higher voltage and JFET are used for lower voltage. JFET around like maximum of 5 volts and MOSFET um, about um, high voltage, in fact 30 volts, 40 volts, 50 volts, it, it depends on the MOSFET. So MOSFET too, we used to have N channel and P channel. So the kind of MOSFET you are dealing with determines um, the value you should be getting on them. So they used to, how do you identify P channel or N channel? Firstly, the, the way they connect the internal diode will communicate to you whether it is P channel or N channel. And the other one, it used to have another arrow inside that will be facing up or down. This arrow is telling you which type of MOSFET you are dealing with. So I'll take a screenshot of this and I'll continue my explanation or I'll show you on the um, schematic. I'll close this and reopen this. Let me close the program. So I will open this. It seems this program is my function. So are we all understanding everything I'm explaining? Okay, okay, okay. So now I want to okay. I, I want to show you how to identify them in schematic. For instance, this particular board, this is the schematic here. Firstly, I will go for the location of this component. You can do this by the meter, but let me just simplify it here. What is the location here? This is PQ51 and PQ52. So if I should go to the schematic here, and I push in PQ51, so you drive me to the part of that component, and here we are. These are the two components. PQ51 and PQ52. Okay. Okay. We should look at these two now, like I've said earlier on. I said, look at my edge. <laughs> I said you can identify this based on the internal arrow, and this this is P channel. How do I know? Because the arrow is facing up. And another thing I can use to know is when the anode side of the internal cathode is connected to the source. I uh, sorry to the drain of the motherboard this is trying to tell me this is p channel so this is the drain part like i've said they are four in number and this is the three pin that are for source this is gate single pin the same thing goes for the second one this is pq51 if you should come on the motherboard this is pq Five one. So this is it here. This three pins here. That happens to be the source. This is it here. And the, this four pin here that happens to be the drain. This is it here. I 
and the last one that happens to be the gate this is it here so here I said diode passes voltage let me just do this intro I said but diode passes voltage through a direction and block at the other part if you should look at this diode here you will notice this diode will pass this voltage but here the voltage cannot pass through why because this is the cathode side that happens to be the impossible side but because this is MOSFET if this is going to transmit from this source to the drain it is determined by this gate so if the value at this pin number 4 is I 100% it won't pass voltage because um, that is the turn off signal but if this part is working perfectly if I should have low voltage here automatically this board will switch freely so that is why and these are part of um, signals we used to communicate in the motherboard as per when to switch and when to when to turn off so that is how MOSFET work so do we now understand so that we can go for the next one Mike, um, ben is down. Okay, okay. 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 Yeah. This person is asking um question about the internal diode of the MOSFET. So the the point is for now. What we are trying to do is how to identify those components. So I will leave that question for now. So by the time we are done treating this MOSFET as topic, you will understand every question you have for it. But to treat this MOSFET, you can't start with MOSFET. But before getting there, we have to understand diode, transistor, JFET before now coming to MOSFET. So all these four classes, it is not a class, a class of four hours, at least around five hours so but the main point here is we should understand difference between different components that is the essence of this introduction to motherboard components so mostly engineers when they come to my office all, all components of motherboard they are transistor some all other from all components of motherboard they are ic so some can refer them as spider ic it's a funny scenario and for this class the main point is at least you guys can differentiate different components from each other do you all understand okay so all right so so let's check for the next components here we have ic to be the next component here but for now I have small class I want to take after this class and I'll assure them based on time. So if I should re log in to finish this class, I will disappoint the next class I'm having. So the one hour I, I have for this class is already exceeded. So what I'll do now is I'll treat the remaining topic, or let me say the remaining seven minutes here, I'll use it for question and answer. So the rest part of the components will take it by tomorrow. Um, what are they going to be? It's going to be IC, inductor, fuse, connector, pad, switch, and crystal. So this shouldn't take much long. So, any question? Ah, I'm on. It's my head. I'm waiting for question. OG. Is it on my key? Femme leg.
Any question? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm able to do that. So me take it to my heart. Ah, networking and taking welcome question on you. Interested that. Yeah. But my question is that uh, doubt uh, trans same link. I think I mean a bit. The network is too bad. I'm not that getting that question here. Person is asking if we have to check the value of this transistor or JFET, the diode. He said, Are we going to place them? Are we going to set the meter at the same range? Actually, yes. So, transistor, JFET, and um, transfer JFET, MOSFET, and which other one? Mm, I think di diode, I think those three. So, those three, you set your meter at diode range they shouldn't beep as in you shouldn't have low value for them so one part will reach and the other part will not reach so we treat them carefully when we get to those components individually so you don't need to plug in charger if they are testing as well Hey, don't talk about that. Yes, sir. Question one. The cooler only goes to me. Yes, sir. Question. Okay. Now, and you are not going to say the most fat and the jet fat. Yeah, this was inside the difference between most fat and jet So, most fat and jet fat, they are working in the same way. But the only major difference there is MOSFET is used for higher voltage and um, JFET is used for lower voltage. JFET probably like 5 volts maximum, around 5 volts, basically 3 volts on motherboard. So, but MOSFET, uh, we are going to get around like 19, 20, and co. Even more than 19. Question wow. Ah, Daniel, oh, by Hey, Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Uh, the coil, coil to supply RAM, yeah. more grand. So, oh man, do I think I'm going to show value. And the back basic continuity. To buy yeah. very low, oh man, do. Come in, people, you share, but to buy it, be 25, oh man, do. But theoretically, 25 would be bad, you go up, you go here, you go out, you share.
Okay, if I'm more multiple, so in a college, Ah, sorry to say, sorry to say. Yes, sir. <laughs> Zoom no malum back in by me daddy. Salam salam. Off I go. Eshi.